In the midst of tragedy, the writer of Lamentations realizes that God's mercies and compassion are new every morning, even during hardship. Welcome to Pastor's Point. I'm Dr. Jamie Schmitz. Today's message is from Reverend Dr. K. Andrew Garber of Whitewater Worship Center in Waterville, Ohio. His message is entitled, New Beginnings, New Mercies. Hello and welcome to Pastor's Point. I am Andy Garber, the pastor of 3WC Church in Waterville, Ohio, and I am so glad and thankful that you have joined me here for this episode. If you have your Bible and you want to follow along, I'll be sharing with you a word from the Lord today out of Lamentations chapter 3. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 26, uh, but more importantly, we're going to focus on the 21, 22, 23 uh, area somewhere in there. Again, that's Lamentations chapter 3, verses 1 through 26. And I'll be reading to you uh, out of the New King James so you can follow along. God's Word says this. It says, I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has led me and made me walk in darkness and not in light. Surely he has turned his hand against me time and time again throughout the day. He has aged my flesh and my skin and broken my bones. He has besieged me and surrounded me with bitterness and woe. You're probably thinking, wow, what is this guy doing? But hang on, folks, hang on. It gets better, I promise you. Verse 6, he has set me in dark places like the dead of long ago. He has hedged me in so that I cannot get out. He has made my chain heavy. Even when I cry and shout, he shuts out my prayer. He has blocked my ways with hewn stone. He has made my paths crooked. He has been to me a bear lying in wait like a lion in ambush. He has turned aside my ways and torn me in pieces. He has made me desolate. He has bent his bow and set me up as a target for the arrows. <clears throat> he has caused the arrows of his quiver to pierce my loins. I have become the ridicule of all my people. Their taunting song all the day. He has filled me with bitterness. He has made me drink wormwood. He has broken my teeth with gravel and covered me with ashes. You have moved my soul far from peace. The writer of Lamentations, which we believe is Jeremiah, this is what he's saying to God. Think about that. You have moved my soul, God, far from peace. <clears throat> I have forgotten prosperity. And I said, I, Jeremiah is talking to himself now. He said, I said, my strength and my hope have perished from the Lord. Remember, verse 19, my affliction and, gro and roaming the wormwood and the gall. My soul still remembers and sinks within me. Now I love this part. I told you it gets better. In verse 21, this I recall to mind, he says, therefore I have hope. Verse 21, he says, this I recall, I'm going to repeat it, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Some of you might even know a song by that name, a very good song. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Now he's talking to himself again. Therefore, I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. This passage of Scripture has really spoken to me as I have uh, sought God's presence to, to decide what to share with you today on this episode and what I have found, what the Lord has revealed to me is that in this passage of Scripture, that, that like I said, I believe Jeremiah to be the writer of Lamentations, what I found in this passage of Scripture so encourages me. I find four life lessons that we can take home 
from what Jeremiah is saying in this passage. And what's interesting is Jeremiah prefaces everything by all the bad stuff that's going on in his life and in his mind to set a little bit of a stage for you. Let me just tell you what's going on. We believe uh, in Jeremiah's life is that he's overlooking the city of Jerusalem as it's being destroyed in 586 B.C. Jeremiah, the prophet of God, who has been ministering before the people saying, hey, repent, repent, repent. He's watching as the beloved city of Jerusalem is being destroyed. And as a matter of fact, some false prophets in that time would tell the king that God can't destroy Jerusalem. His temple is here. And Jeremiah has told them, the city is going to go down. The city is going to fall. And now he's watching this happen as he writes the book of Lamentations. But the great thing about this is there are four life lessons that we can take from this passage of Scripture. The first life lesson, and I'll go through all four and then we'll come back and talk about them, is that we can call to mind the things of God and we can have hope. The second life lesson is that through God's mercies, we are not consumed. The third life lesson that we can take out of this is that God's compassion and His mercies are new every morning. That's where we're going to stay focused there. A friend of mine when I lived in Georgia used to say this, we're going to put that one on the burner and we're going to let that one simmer a little bit. That's where we're going to stay with that. And then the fourth life lesson is that God's faithfulness is great. So let's talk about first thing, call to mind. When you're watching this, I don't know if it's your, the first day of the week, first day of the month, first day of the year, but one thing we know is that days sometimes bring trials. They sometimes bring tribulations. They sometimes bring hurt and disappointment. We get up in the morning excited about a new day and then something happens along the way that can bring us down and they can crush our soul. But we have got to call to mind the greatness of God, the mercies of God, and the compassion of God. And we've got to hope in those things. We have to call them to mind. We have to force ourselves sometimes to remember these. Now, David does this in the Psalms. Some of the Psalms are so great because you'll read through, all of the Psalms are great, but some of them you'll read through there and David is like, why are you so downcast, my soul? I will look to you. And I'm paraphrasing, of course, but David does that a lot. Because trials come, tribulation comes. But one thing we know for sure is that we can look to God and we can hope in Him. Because Jeremiah's word through lamentation says this. It says that we are, because of God's mercies, we are not consumed. Because of not, God's mercies, we are not consumed. We're not burned up. We're not burned out because of His compassion and His mercies. Now, maybe you don't know this, but the word mercy in the Bible is comparative to the word pity, the word compassion, and a word that we all love so very much, the word grace. And what Jeremiah, what the writer of Lamentations is telling us is that because we're not consumed, because we're not burned up, we can have faith in and trust in the compassion of God because, life lesson number three, because God's mercies are new every morning. This is an interesting fact that, that has uh, struck my mind and it's so simple, but yet to me it's so profound and maybe to you, you'd be like, meh, whatever, but to me it just, it strikes a chord. Do you realize that every day, every week, Every month, even every New Year, New Year's Day, all of those, they begin with a new morning. And that's where you're like, well, duh. But no, saints, we need to look at this and we need to understand that the Bible says, God's Word says, even in the midst of trial, as the writer of Lamentations, as Jeremiah is saying, look at all these bad things I feel like God has allowed to happen to me. Yet he tells us that God's mercies and his compassions are new every morning. So it doesn't matter if you're waking up today and you're watching this episode. It's a new day. God's mercies are new. It doesn't matter if you wake up and it's the first day of the week. God's mercies are new. First day of the month, God's mercies are new. Even on a new day of the year, the first day of the year, New Year's Day, if that's the day, then God's mercies are still brand new because the Bible tells us His mercies are new every Morning. No matter what you're facing today, God's mercies are new because, life lesson number four, because of His great faithfulness. God's mercies and His compassion 
are inexhaustible and without measure. Think about that for just a second. They're inexhaustible. Yeah, but Pastor Andy, you don't understand. God's mercies are inexhaustible. Yeah, but Pastor Andy, I did this. Then repent. Get back with God. Get right with God because His mercies and His compassion and His grace is new every morning. So one of the things that I like to do as a pastor at my church is kind of like the Andy Stanley uh, pattern of preaching. I don't know if you have heard of Andy Stanley or have watched him before, but I read a book by him and it's called Say What, So What, Now What? And, and I had to take this when I was in Bible college and read it and it was a fantastic book. I absolutely loved it because the first part of it is so what, now what? First part of it is, is so what does the Bible tell us? The passage of scripture you're preaching, the book is designed for preachers and Bible study leaders, but he's, he says in there, the part of the Bible that you're studying, the part of the Bible that you're reading, so what does it say? And then the second part of that is now, what are we going to do about it? Well, I've told you what the Word of God says in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 1 through 26. We read it. We've commented on it. What are we going to do with it? Now what? Now what do we do with this message that God has seen fit to bring us for over 2,000 years? First takeaway. We have, we have some takeaways we're going we're gonna to have from this point. And the very first one is that God is our portion. God is our portion. Talk to your soul when your soul is down, when your soul is distressed, when, when the devil is just coming against you, when life is just throwing one thing and another at you every day. Talk to yourself. It's not crazy. It's not crazy. People say, oh, you talk to yourself. No, it's not crazy. Talk to your soul like David does, like Jeremiah is doing in this passage of Scripture, and remind yourself that God is my portion. God is my portion. The second takeaway that we can uh, take home and we can use is that we will hope in him until we see him face to face. Interesting, if Jeremiah is the author of the, the book of Lamentations, which like I said, I, I believe he is. You know, Jeremiah drops out of Bible history after this and tradition tells us that he was uh, either taken away or moved to Egypt after the fall of Jerusalem. He's never, never heard from again. There's no, no more talk about him. But one thing we realize is that as Jeremiah, who lived in and around the area of Jerusalem, who prophesied to them to get right with God and, and watch the destruction of the holy city, is that he realized he could hope in the Lord. Even in the midst, like we read in verse 21, he says, I, will, I well remember them and my soul is downcast. In verse 21, and he says, yet I call this to mind and therefore I have hope. Listen, you're watching this show. You might be a Christian. You might not be a Christian. Um, you can always hope in God. He is always faithful. That's one of the points, one of the takeaways that we're going to have is that God is always faithful. So you never have to give up hope in him. There's an old cliche out there in the church world that says God is never uh, early and he's never late. He's always right on time. So don't ever lose hope in the Lord. Third takeaway that we can glean from this passage of scripture is that God is with those who wait patiently for him. God is with those who wait patiently for him. There's a very famous passage of scripture that a lot of people love and, and have uh, put to their memory in Isaiah. It says, they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. And waiting on the Lord don't mean that we just stand there and go. It means that we actively wait for God to move in our situation because our fourth takeaway, friends, is this. He will come through. God will come through. He is faithful. He is faithful today. He will be faithful tomorrow. He will be faithful next week. He will be faithful next month. He'll be faithful at the beginning of every new year because God is faithful. God's mercies are new every morning. Every morning, God's mercies are are new. And I, I said that we want to put that one on the burner and we want to let it simmer for a little bit. So I want to go back to that passage of scripture that starts in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21. And this is what Jeremiah says. Yet I call this to mind. Talk to yourself. Talk to yourself about what's going on in your life. If you have a trial, if you have a struggle, maybe you have a loved one that's sick or fighting an illness of some kind, maybe your marriage is breaking down, talk to your soul to trust 
in God. Jeremiah says that. He says, I call this to mind, therefore I have hope. And in verse 22, he says this. He says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. You know, we think about the scriptures, and I know that some of you watching this know that scripture very well in John chapter 3, verse 16, that says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God was the first one that moved in this love relationship. God was the first one that moved in this love relationship. If Jeremiah is the writer of Lamentations, then he knows very well the story of Genesis chapter 1, or, or chapter 3, excuse me, the fall of Adam and Eve. He knows very well that story. And, and if Jeremiah is not the writer of Lamentations, then, then the person that wrote it probably knows that story very well. And if you think back to when Adam and Eve fell, when they lost fellowship with God, the Bible tells us that God came looking for them. And one of the things I love about that story in Genesis is that God, the Bible says that God used to walk with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. Now, I don't know which part of the day they're talking about. I've never researched that out in Scripture because I like to think that the cool of the day is sometimes in the morning and the cool of the day is sometimes in the evening. And when I think about that, I'm, one, I'm, a, I'm a morning person. I, I get up, I have coffee, I have my private time with the Lord. Um, and I just think about that, that I get up and that's the cool of the day. Sometimes I sit out on my porch when the weather is nice. And I think about that, though, that God, the Bible says, walked with Adam and Eve. And in that time after they sinned, God came walking and he was looking for them. Adam and Eve had hidden because they had sinned. But God came looking for them. And he walked in the garden trying to find the ones that had separated themselves from him. Now, if we look at this as being the, the, the morning, the reason God would walk in the garden and look for them in the morning, if we accept it that way, is because his mercies are new. Just stay with me in this. In my church, I call these the Max Lucado moments. He has excellent books. He, he takes stories and, and gives you backstories. They're fantastic. So I like to do that sometimes, too. Adam and Eve are in the garden. The serpent lies to them both because Adam was with Eve when it happened. They ate of the fruit from which they were not supposed to and they ran and hid themselves. And so for the sake of, of uh, storytelling, let's just think that that happened and they went to bed worried, worried about what was going to happen. What's God going to think when he finds out we've eaten from the tree? And if, if, if this story takes place in the evening and, and they go to sleep and they wake up in the morning and God comes looking for them. Adam and Eve are thinking that God's going to be angry because they have broken his rules. But again, the Bible tells us that God is looking for them. God goes calling to them. Adam, where are you? And Adam's like, I'm right here, Lord. And God's like, why are you hiding? And he said, because we, we did something we weren't supposed to do. But yet the mercies of God were brand new even back then, when you say, well, Adam and Eve faced punishment. Yes, they did. God said that if they did that, they would die. And they did spiritually, and they eventually did physically. But God had compassion, the Bible shows us and tells us. that God had compassion on Adam and Eve because he cr created coats of skins to cover them to cover their shame, to cover their nakedness. And I like to think about that as the writer of Lamentations is thinking about this and says that because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed in verse 22 of chapter 3 of Lamentations. Because of the Lord's great love, because God loved Adam and Eve so much that even after they sinned, he came looking for them. Another story that I'm sure the writer of Lamentations would be familiar with is the story of David and Bathsheba. Maybe you know that story, maybe you do not. The Bible tells us that King David sees a woman, finds her very attractive, brings her to the palace, and he has an intimate relationship with her. And we know from later in the story it ends up resulting in a pregnancy. To cover this all up, he calls her husband back from the battlefield and tries to convince her husband to go home and have relations with his wife, and he refused because the soldiers are in the field. He said, it wouldn't be right for me to do this while my brothers are fighting. So David orders him to be sent to the very front of the line, and he orders his commander to pull back as Uriah, that's the man's name, is at the front, and he dies. And so David takes Bathsheba into his house and, and makes her his wife, and he thinks everything's fine until the prophet Nathan shows up. 
And Nathan tells a story. He says, you know, King, there's this guy. He owns this little lamb. He loves this lamb. He lets it be in the house with him. He lets it sleep with him. He lets it eat from his table. He loves this lamb. And David's like, cool, because David was a shepherd. He gets that. But then Nathan says, and then this rich guy who has a lot of lambs, got a lot of sheep, he's got a lot of influence, got a lot of money. He steals that lamb, kills it, and feeds it to some people. David is incensed. He's furious. And he says, that man is going to pay the uttermost price. And yet Nathan looks at David and says, thou art the man. And what's interesting about that story when we think about David and Bathsheba and Nathan is we get the 51st Psalm from that story. And David talks and he says, have mercy on me, O God. Because God's mercies are new every morning. Even though David had sinned a heinous sin, God had mercy on him. God had compassion on him. And again, the writer of Lamentations would know that very well when he says, because of the Lord's great mercies, we are not consumed. Interestingly enough, David loved the law of God. You can read that over and over again in Psalms, especially uh, Psalm 119. You read over how David just says, I love your law, I'll delight in your law every day. And yet David broke the law when he sinned with Bathsheba and murdered her husband. He didn't do it personally, but he conspired to have it done. And yet in the 51st Psalm, we see David's repentance and we see his heart being broken. And in that Psalm, he even says, and I'm paraphrasing, you can look it up. This will be a good study for you if you feel like you've, you've hurt God or you've sinned. In that psalm, he says, Lord, if you restore me, I'm paraphrasing, I'll teach sinners your ways. And David can do that because David knew full well that because of the Lord's great mercies, we're not consumed. And his mercies, I can't stress this enough, his mercies, his compassions are new every morning. Every morning they are brand new saints. Isn't that something that just makes you just want to rejoice and just makes you want to love God all the more? That no matter what we do, no matter how we break God's heart, that when we repent and come back to Him, His mercies are new. And then it goes on in that next verse. It says, they're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Verse 23, great is your faithfulness. And that takes me back to... Uh, reminding me of that old hymn of the church. That hymn, I did some research on it. I'm one of those guys, I like the backstory of everything. I like, to, I like to tear stuff apart to see how it's made. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not as good uh, at putting it back together. So, uh, but one of the things I love is I researched that song. And it started out as a poem that was written around 1920, 1923, if memory serves me correct. And then it was set to music. And if you don't know it, the first part of it goes like this. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. Great, and, and I've stopped there, but great is thy faithfulness. And that's part of the public domain. You can look it up. You can play it. You don't have to have any permissions. You can sing it over and over and over again. Great, and the chorus goes, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. And I love this part. It says, all I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. So as we come to the end of our time together, I want to just reiterate a few things for you. Like I said, I, I, I'm not sure when you're watching this episode but I can guarantee this one thing, that at some point in time, either before you watch this episode or after you watch this episode, a new morning will come, a new dawn will come. And I want to encourage you and I want to remind you that when that new morning happens or happened, you had brand new mercies, brand new compassion, brand new grace from our Father God. Because His Word tells us they are new every morning. So start of a new week. Most of us, the work week is Monday. God's mercies are new. Start of a new month that comes on any day of the week. God's mercies are new. Start of a new year. God's mercies are new. And I would challenge you to be encouraged by that point and to focus on God and don't let the devil lie to you and tell you that you're worthless and that you don't deserve God's compassion. None of us deserve God's compassion. But His faithfulness and His mercy are new every morning. And God is looking for you like He did with Adam and Eve. And He is hoping for you to come to Him and realize that there is nothing you can do in your life 
that would make him not want you. I'll close it with this, John 3, 16. God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. I'll stop there and I'll add Romans 5, 8, 9, and 10 paraphrased that says, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. While you were his enemy, Jesus paid the price for your sins. So don't run from him. Go to him. Take those new mercies. Take that new compassion and that new grace and trust God always and hope in him. In Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Pastor's Point. I trust this message has been a blessing to you and hope you consider connecting with this local church. To learn more about Pastor's Point, visit wlmb.com forward slash Pastor's Point, where you can send us feedback, watch episodes on YouTube, and find a schedule of pastors for this season's episodes. Pastor's Point is a local, viewer-supported ministry that couldn't exist without the generous support of viewers like you. If this message has impacted you, please consider making a financial gift today and make sure to send us a note about how Pastor's Point has made a difference in your life. Thank you for supporting us and helping us bring a variety of life-giving messages right into people's homes through the ministry of Pastor's Point.